Just thank God for for um, Pastor Bill allowing me this opportunity, listening to to the voice of God, and listening to His Spirit, and affording me the opportunity to walk out my calling. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So thank God for you, Pastor Bill. Thank God. For you, Sister Holly, man, I see you back there as well. Found it first lady of this church. Thank God for all of the leadership of this church who, who came out to worship God with us today. I'm going to start at Matthew chapter 27. If you feel so led, you may stand for the reading of the word of God. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this day, God, and we just pray right now, God, that you would set the captive free today. Hallelujah, God. Whoever needs deliverance this day, Lord, let your word provide it to them. Glory to God. Whoever needs healing this day, God, let your word be the provider of their healing this day. Hallelujah. God, whoever needs a financial breakthrough this day, hallelujah, let your word be the provider of that breakthrough this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's waiting for their child to come to you this day, Lord God. Let your word, hallelujah, give them the hope that they so need to yes, endure while their God. child makes their way slowly back to you, God. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and hear your voice this day. And Lord, I pray that that is all the people we hear this day is your voice. Hallelujah, God. Yes. Remove me from this place, Lord. I am your vessel. Hallelujah. Let your spirit speak through me today and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Glory to God. And I just want to go back to verse 45. Hallelujah. And read that one more time. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Glory to God. Those of you that don't know, the sixth hour would be about noon. Glory to God. And at noon, it got dark outside. Hallelujah. As they were killing our Savior, as we were killing our Savior, at a time that there should have been light, there became no light. Glory to God. And so what the Lord put on my heart today to, to minister before all of you beautiful, beautiful God's people is what are you going to do when the power goes out? Hallelujah. And, and so God put this on my heart and immediately I began to think of a time very recently that the power went out in our house. Lord, because when you hear that phrase, the power goes out, you automatically, uh, how many of you have ever been uh, subject to a power outage? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, I think almost all of us without fail have experienced it one time or another. 
Glory to God. So the Lord put this on my heart, and I began to think of a time. Very recently, our power went out. It went out about 3 a.m. in the morning. Glory to God. I woke up right about the time it went out, and and I uh, began to think, oh, man, when is this going to come back on? It's hot, and, and you know, we got all our luxuries that we're so used to having, but when the power goes out, you lose your luxuries. Hallelujah. And so... So by the time my alarm on my phone was going off, about three hours later, the power was still out. So we got ready for work and got ready to go about our day all with no power. Hallelujah. And, and we went to work and we spent the whole day worrying about all the food that we had in our refrigerator. Hallelujah. We spent the whole day just checking in with Excel Energy to see. It, is our power going to come back on? And every time they gave us a, an estimate, it would get we get up to the new estimate time, and they would they would say another two or three hours. Hallelujah! So eventually, instead of just looking on my phone, I began to call Excel Energy. Hallelujah! Because the Lord told me when when you have a power outage, the problem is that there's a break in the line somewhere between you and the source, hallelujah. But the source that day, the source that day began, as soon as they knew the power was out, hallelujah, they began to try to repair that connection, hallelujah. But the power lines, uh, when I called, they said they were buried underneath the ground. They're not ones that run along the poles anymore. And so it's harder for them to identify where the break in the line is. And so that's why it was taking so long. Glory to God. We got to the end of that day, and um, none of our food was messed up. The, the electricity didn't come on. If I remember right, it was about 4 p.m. So it was out for, for a large part of a hot day. And, and none of our food, it was all good. Glory to God. But then another time, just a couple weeks ago, hallelujah, we, we, we were at church on a Sunday. The power went out. We didn't even know it went out. Hallelujah. But throughout the week, we kept getting stuff out of our fridge and saying, why is this bad? We just bought this. Why is this bad? We just bought this. Why is this? Well, come to find out, the power went out, and we didn't even realize it. Glory to God. And see, God showed me it's more dangerous for the power to go out and for you to not realize it than for the power to go out and have you know that it's gone out. See, hallelujah. Because if the power goes out and you know about it, then you can begin to look to the Lord. You can begin to look to the heaven, heavens and begin to pray to God, 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 this power outage is causing harm to me. This power outage is causing harm to my family. Hallelujah. God, please sustain us. God, bring the power back. Hallelujah. And so I give you that testimony and, and I tell you this scripture brought that, that to me because there was darkness when there should have been light. There was a power outage. Glory to God. And as I continued to study the scripture, God, God continued to reveal things to me. I asked the Lord, why did the power go out three hours before you took your last breath and gave up the ghost? Glory to God. Because my initial thought is, if Jesus is still on the earth, then it can't be dark. Glory to God. But there was so much rejection of God in these three hours that there could not be any power. Hallelujah. So God showed me that the power, in fact, went out on the land before I actually died. Glory to God. Now, it says that there was an earthquake. It says that the veil of the temple was rent in twain. That's It's rent in two. It was torn in half. Glory to God. For those of you that don't know, the veil of the temple was set up to separate the common people, hallelujah, from the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is where the Spirit of God dwells. Hallelujah. And when Jesus took his last breath, there was an earthquake on the land, and, and the veil was torn in two, so that we could know from this point forward, 
We don't have to be separate from God. Hallelujah. From this point forward, we're allowed to dwell with God. From this point forward, we don't have to rely on our pastor to get in touch with God for us. We can get in touch with God ourselves. Hallelujah. So I began again to dig deeper. Hallelujah. To see exactly um, what happened. Is there any proof? See, because we've got to be looking to see, does the history of the earth line up with the history of the Bible? So as I began to type into Google, earthquakes in, in Israel, hallelujah, I happened upon a piece of information on the, the NOAA. Those of you who are listening, you might be real familiar with that because recently we've been wasting all our time going to the NOAA to see if our president is a liar when he predicts hurricanes to hit Alabama, but they're actually going to hit North Carolina, hallelujah. But on the same website that we're going to to see if that can be confirmed or denied, they have listed a significant earthquake, hallelujah, in 33 AD in Jerusalem, hallelujah. This is government website, and this is a direct quote from the website. This is a small portion of, of what it says. But it says, this earthquake, which is said to have occurred during the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ in Jerusalem, caused darkness over all the land, tombs to open, and the ground to split open. Glory to God. This is listed as factual information for those of us who have been wondering if God is real, for those of us who have been wondering if the, if the things that the Bible says happened actually happened. We're living in a day that we can pull this handy computer right out of our pocket. Yes, we can pull it out of our pocket and we can search. Hallelujah. We just got to figure out how to pull it out and not automatically click on Facebook. Hallelujah. We got to figure out how to pull it out and not automatically click on Instagram. Glory to God. We got to figure out how to pull it out and not automatically go into our words with friends. We've got to figure out how to Pull it out and do something useful with it. Glory to God, he's been showing me this for a long time. And, and, and I still suffer. I still, listen, I'm not pointing the finger at all of you. I say we, and I mean it. I'm part of this. I pull my phone out, and I click on the wrong thing more often than not. But, but God's saying today, if we would pull it out and we would click on his word, if we would pull it out instead of Googling some, some random facts that we don't need, if we would start searching, hallelujah, we would find that, that he is a fact, hallelujah. He's a factual God. Glory to God. And so this is what I found on NOAA. You can look it up. Glory to God. As I began, as I continued to research, I don't always bring articles that I find that, but God's working, y'all. God is working. Glory to God, I'm on the brain. Because a lot of times, we'll trust the history books that tell us Abe Lincoln was the president 500 years ago, but we won't trust the Bible that says Jesus Christ was our savior 2,000 years ago. Glory to God, and that he's still our savior today. Hallelujah. Why is it that we trust what the history books say? Have any of you in this room seen Abraham Lincoln? Did any of you in this room witness Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves? Do any of you in this room know personally one of those people that was a slave? We don't know right now, glory to God, and I understand this is a sensitive subject, so I'm, I'm going to get up off of it, but glory to God, we don't, we were not there to witness that history, and we take it as fact. We were not there to witness the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and we doubt it. Glory to God. We doubt the word of God. Hallelujah. So, so I looked and I saw that there was the earthquake that was that was shown. And a lot of the things that I looked up said there was an eclipse of the sun. And that's why it went dark. Hallelujah. But I kept on searching because I thought. I thought God is a supernatural God. He doesn't need the natural things to align for his power to go out. Glory to God. So I kept looking. And what I found 
was another article from the Atlantic talking about when is Easter and why doesn't Passover always overlap with Easter. Hallelujah. And this one portion that I read just struck me. Passover always begins on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, hallelujah, because the Hebrew months are paid directly to the lunar cycle. The 15th day of Nisan is always, always, always a full moon. Now, immediately what we might think in our pea-sized human minds is that a full moon that must be what takes place when there's a solar eclipse because the moon has to be full but what we fail to realize is that the moon is actually always full we just don't always see the light shining against it glory to god so in order for a lunar eclipse to take place the moon has to be a new moon so if this was taking place during the Passover, then it was not, the conditions were not right for a lunar eclipse to take place because the moon and the sun were on opposite ends of the earth. They could not have crossed each other's paths. So while we were out killing the Lord, the power of God was slowly disappearing for three hours. For three hours, we stood there and we mocked him. For three hours, we stood there and we doubted who he was. For three hours, we could not give him the, the honor that he deserves. Glory to God. And the power began to die out. And the power began to go out. So, so that was a supernatural thing that happened. Do I have anyone under the sound of my voice that believes in supernatural things happening? This is what he wants. He wants us to believe in the supernatural. We can't keep going on making sense of things. I have a very rational mind. When something happens, I have to figure out how it happens and, and it has to all make sense. The hardest thing I ever did was read the Bible. Because there's things in there that require you to just step out in faith, not knowing how things happen, not knowing how things are going to come together, not knowing how your life is going to gonna finally see a breakthrough, not knowing how your kids are going to be saved, not knowing how you're going to pay your bills, hallelujah, not knowing how you're going to restore the health in your body, not knowing how you're going to break that addiction, not knowing how you're going to get out of depression, not knowing, not not knowing, not knowing, you, we don't know, hallelujah, and God requires us to just trust that he is able. If he can shut the sun off for three hours, glory to God, he, he can make the sun, listen, Joshua prayed to God, Joshua prayed to God, and God made the opposite happen. God said, I'll make the sun stand still, hallelujah, for a full day so that you can win the battle, but you've got to believe, hallelujah, that I have the power, hallelujah, you have got to believe that I'm almighty God, hallelujah, you have got to believe, glory to God, you have got to believe that somebody believes that he's able, glory to God, we sing the song, he is able, hallelujah, do you believe that in your heart, that he's able to make a way where there's no way, glory to God, he's able to deliver you, glory to God, he's able to get you out of the fire, glory to God, he's liable to let you go back into another fire, glory to God, but that's why you're in the fire that you're in right now, glory to God, because he's looking at you, asking you, will you trust me and my power to get you out of this fire, hallelujah, because I want to know that you will be ready for the next fire, hallelujah, see, because God is at the beginning and at the end, hallelujah, he's the beginning and the end, hallelujah, he's standing with us here right in the middle, glory to God, he's also in heaven with us worshiping him already, glory to God, while he's watching Adam and Eve be deceived. Glory to God. And he's asking you today, do you want to get out of that fire? 
fire. Glory to God. Because there's another fire coming. And the next fire is going to be much hotter. Glory to God. And you've got to be more fireproof. Glory to God. But you can't be fireproof for the fires that come against God unless you are clothed with Him. Glory to God. Unless you are surrounded with Him. Glory to God. God showed me that the context of a subject is what surrounds it. And God told me to ask you now, what is your context? What is the context of your life? Are you surrounding yourself with Him? Or are you surrounding yourselves with things that are against Him? Glory to God. Because if you're surrounding yourself with things that go against Him, you will not have His power to deliver you from your fire. Hallelujah. God kept on prying on me to get me to research even deeper. And he, he had me, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do, I listen to a lot, a lot of podcasts about the Lord. They're, they're great. They're like radio shows about the Lord. For all of us who who have had our one or two Christian stations at most, now that we're finally in 2019, listen, there's a world out there that, that is dying to get the good news out. And if you'll seek it out, you can find these podcasts. They're great. They're, they're pastors just sitting down, recording themselves so that more people can hear what the Lord says. Glory to God. And this one that I listen to, I listen to this one called... Uh, Rainer on leadership. It's Tom Rainer. He's the founder of Life Lifeway uh, Bookstores, and um, he has this podcast, and it's it's basically talking about leadership in the church. And and I'm very careful when I listen to it because I want to hear what God has to say and not what Tom Rainer has to say. But but this they had this man on there. They were interviewing him. His name was Troy Pollock. He's the chief ambassador for the company Pushpay, hallelujah. And they were interviewing him on this podcast about his app and its usefulness. What Pushpay is, is this was a while back, they designed this app so that churches could begin to take electronic tithes and offerings. And so they, they brought this man on. He's one of the, the original founders of this company. He's one of the original uh, founders of this idea, because it is not a strange idea anymore, but 10 years ago it was. It was, it was thought odd to have people just uh, going on their phone and typing in how much they want to give to the church that they're sitting in, but, but this is what he did. Anyway, in the interview, he was quoted saying, let's be honest, across the country, Church attendance as we used to know it with bottoms in seats on a Sunday morning is changing or it has changed. So how do we engage with people through this digital means? There's like 75% of millennials that say they read scripture through a digital means. Whether that's the YouVersion Bible app or the Jesus Calling uh, app for their devotional, it is on a digital device. And then he says this, this is what struck me. This is like what the Holy Ghost said, pay attention to this. Hard copies are obsolete now. How many of you brought a, a hard copy of the Bible with you today? Show of hands, let's see. Amen. Amen. You know why I brought mine? Because I knew that I was going to read this note. I brought it as a backup. How many of you have a backup plan? Listen, I want to ask the youth in here, too. How many of you have the Bible app on your phone? Because I've been stumbling across a lot of youths that don't even think it's necessary to have the Bible app on their phone. Glory to God. They'll, they'll use all their, all their storage for their pictures, they'll use all their storage for these useless apps, but they won't spend, I mean, it's a minimal amount to make sure you have the word of God with you at all times, hallelujah. But the real problem here is, what are you going to do when the power goes out? See, because if the power goes out, you might still have 
100% on your phone battery. But if the power don't come back on by the time you run out, if the power don't come back on by the time you run out, you're going to need the hard copy. Glory to God. Listen, the hard copy is not necessarily toting your paper Bible with you everywhere you go, although I would recommend it. The hard copy is writing God's word on your heart. Hallelujah. I got the word of God with me everywhere that I go. I live the word of God with me everywhere that I go. The word of God follows me to bed. Hallelujah. The word of God wakes me up in the morning. Hallelujah. The word of God gets me through my work day. Glory to God. The word of God gets me through my children's sickness. Hallelujah. But if I don't know the word of God and I don't have a copy of the word of God, then how am I depending upon the word of God? If I'm not seeking God in his word, I'm not going to have the power of God. So many times we neglect God. We neglect God. We go, we go MIA on God. And then something bad comes our way. And we cry out, and God, where are you? God, I thought you were here. God, I thought you would never listen. This is where you get it. Thought you would never leave nor forsake me. Huh? God says, huh? I heard what? I heard something. I heard some, I heard, I heard my word. Listen, it's when you get to the point that you're saying his word to him. It's when you get to the point that you're repeating his promises to him. Hallelujah. When you're saying, God, I know your word says this, God. Listen, we will never, 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 we will never deserve. That's why there's grace. We will never deserve to, to have God with us at all times. But when we when we repeat his word to him, his power is able to surround us. His power is able to become our context. Hallelujah. God showed me a um, report. Y'all may have heard the, the president doing a, uh, it's, it's like an emergency broadcast type test for, for an EMP attack. And many people mocked him for, for doing this. Hallelujah. Um, EMP attacks, if you don't know what they are, I'm about to tell you. Because we've got to know what we're going to do when the power goes out. I'm not, I'm not here to scare you. I'm just here to tell you that there's things out there that the news won't tell you. There are things out there that our news is not talking about. Glory to God. And these EMP attacks, our news will make a mockery of. But what if it actually happened? Jesus said there will be wars and rumors of wars. Hallelujah. He didn't just say there will be rumors of wars. He said there will be wars. Glory to God. And so an EMP attack in an extraordinary and sobering report meant to educate the nation on a growing threat, a new military study warns that an electromagnetic pulse weapon attack, such as those developed by North Korea, Russia, and Iran, could essentially challenge the United States and displace millions. <sighs> Glory to God. What an EMP attack is, is a nuclear attack that they place high, high, high on, on the highest elevation. So if I was one of them, if they could figure out how to get this deep into the United States, Colorado is probably a prime position. It's, it's almost central to the United States. We have the elevation. And, and what they do is they set this off. And what this does is it fries the electric system, the electrical grids. The entire electric system of the United States would be compromised. So what are we going to do when the power goes out? If the, it says 90% it says of the population on the East Coast would die in a year of an attack that would dismantle or interfere with electricity, transportation, food processing, and health care. This thing would not just fry electricity as we know it. It would make electricity as we know it in the words of that man, obsolete. Hallelujah, we wouldn't have electricity. Even our phones would get fried by this. 
So even if we have the 100%, it's gone immediately. All the power that we thought we had stored up would be gone. Glory to God. So what are we going to do when the power goes out? This says military and commercial jets such as those built by Airbus could be degraded. Alarmingly, aircraft designed to carry large numbers of people and sizable cargo are allowed to operate without certainty about their level of resilience to one of these EMP attacks. If you're flying on an airplane and this thing takes place, it could be a problem. Hallelujah. And you better have the word of God written on your heart. Don't wait until the plane is going down. Get the word of God written on your heart before you step on the plane. Hallelujah. Bases would be cut off, making defense and counterattacks impossible. Civil unrest would start in hours. Hallelujah. Listen, if there's civil unrest, don't be the people that are running and looting the stores. Be the person standing out on the corner preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Power and GPS could go dark, and EMP would cause instantaneous and simultaneous loss of many technologies reliant on electrical power and computer circuit boards such as cell phones and GPS devices. Failures may include long-term loss of electrical power due to loss of emergency generators, sewage, fresh water, banking, landline, cellular service vehicles. 18 months or more would be required to replace key amount, key elements of the electric grid that would be damaged or knocked out. Figuring out just which country launched an attack would be difficult since certain weapons could be delivered in a satellite. What are you gonna do when the power goes out? Hallelujah. What this? I began to pray to God, God, what am I going to do when the power goes out? And that's what we've got to do. We've got to pray. God, I want to be ready. When the power goes out, let me be ready. Hallelujah. Because right here we see the, the power going out in Matthew chapter 27. Then God brought something to my attention just the other night over in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Glory to God. Then I'm going to read this. Then I'm going to read one more passage of scripture. Then I'm going to let the, the Lord use me to hopefully divide it in your mind. And rightly so. And then we're going to go home. Hallelujah. And watch the Broncos lose. Glory to God. Oh, I'm prophesying today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 24. Listen to this, y'all. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, that means the Jews and everyone else, and we're lumped in with the Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Then I'm going to go back to verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Hallelujah. To them that are perishing is nonsense. The preaching of the cross is nonsense. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. So for us who believe, for us that have accepted salvation, the preaching of the cross is the power. Hallelujah. So where, where is the power? Preaching. In the preaching of the cross. Glory to God. The power, I would even venture to say, for those of you who say, well, I'm not called to preach. Hallelujah. One, you're wrong. Everybody's called to preach somewhere in their life. It may not be in a pulpit. But there is somewhere in your life you should be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But for two, it's the power. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. What? It is what? We've been walking around in the dark, hallelujah, for three hours, glory to God. Whatever those three hours may have been. For some of us, those three hours could have been a week. For some of us, it may have been months. Hallelujah. Whatever it's been, we've been walking around in the darkness wondering, why are we left in this darkness? 
Hallelujah. Why can't we escape from this darkness? When will we see the light again? These people that were crucifying Jesus, not one account in the Bible says that they even noticed that it was dark. Hallelujah. They didn't even notice what time it was. Glory to God. See, because God's time is not the same time that we have. Hallelujah. God can make it be dark when it's not supposed to be dark, and we won't even realize it. Glory to God. But for those of us who have realized that we've been wandering in darkness, we've been looking to God saying, why am I still stuck in this darkness? Glory to God. Glory to God. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. Glory to God. It is the power. Hallelujah. The word of God. The cross is the power of God. If we're not living the word of God, we're not living in the power of God. Hallelujah. We've got to start looking at ourselves very deeply within and, and, and looking deep at ourselves saying, am I actually walking in the power of God? Am I actually following all of his commandments? Hallelujah. Am I actually doing the things that Jesus told me that I should do to be a Christian? Hallelujah. Jesus said that, that he came so that we could be made sons of God. Hallelujah. We came so that when God looks at us, he could see his children. Hallelujah. If we're not living the word of God, God is looking at us and he is not seeing one of his children. Hallelujah. We've got to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. In these last and evil days, the power of God was going out for three hours in darkness. But then God showed me something. That wasn't the power going out. That was the power being lost. Because what actually happened when Jesus breathed his last and gave up the ghost, that is actually when the power began to go out. Hallelujah. When the power began to go out, hallelujah, the sun began to shine again. Hallelujah. When the power began to go out, people began to repent again. Hallelujah. When the power actually went out, people were saved. Hallelujah. People could not be saved before the power had gone out. People had to wait until the power had gone out. Hallelujah. To be saved. Glory to God. I'm going to read one last passage. For he had, hold on, Luke 8, verse 43, and a woman, this may be a familiar scripture, most of you I think have, I've seen in here a few times, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. Hallelujah. This woman gave everything she had to try to be healed. Hallelujah. But she couldn't came behind him, him being Jesus, they're being pressed in a crowd, and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude wronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, who touched thee? Hallelujah. And Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Hallelujah. Now, I looked at the meaning of the word there, throng. Hallelujah. Do any of you know the meaning of the word throng? Because we, went, we might read the word of God and not, not eagerly desire a deeper understanding of the words that are actually put before us. Throng is not just like I automatically assumed the first time I read it and many times after. That just meant that it, he was stuck in the middle of a crowd. He was, he was really trying to get through the crowd. Glory to God. But throng, if you actually look at it in its biblical usage, throng means suffocate. Hallelujah. So all these people were passing around God, the Son of God, Jesus, and suffocating him. Hallelujah. There were lots of people in the crowd who knew who he was. Listen, the crowd was there to see Jesus. Hallelujah. The crowd comes to church to see Jesus. 
There's lots of people in the church who know who Jesus is, glory to God, but all they're actually doing by showing up once in a while is suffocating him, glory to God. The people were pressing around. These people knew who he was, and they knew that he had power. They knew that he was capable of setting the captive free, hallelujah. They knew that he had rest all within him. They knew that every one of their needs could be met by him, glory to God. And they were content to just show up and be part of the crowd, hallelujah. But God says today, do you not want my power? If you want my power, you cannot be content to just show up and be a part of the crowd, hallelujah. You have got to show up like the woman with the issue of blood did, hallelujah. And you've got to get down, hallelujah. You've got to get all the way down, hallelujah. See, because before we got to the woman of blood, before we got to the woman of blood, Jesus delivered a man who had many demons, hallelujah. And when the man with many demons saw Jesus coming off in the distance, he ran to him, hallelujah. If you know that you're missing the mark with Jesus, you've got to see him off in the distance, and you've got to begin to run to him, hallelujah. And when you get to him, what the man did when he got to him, he fell at his feet, hallelujah. And prior to that, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus, not prior to that, right after that had happened, a man came who was a leader of the synagogue, hallelujah, all this in Luke chapter 8, when the man who was the leader of the synagogue, hallelujah, a man thought to be righteous, hallelujah, a man thought to be holy, hallelujah, a man thought to be worthy of carrying the word of God. When he came to Jesus because his daughter was dying, it says in the word of God that he fell, hallelujah, at the feet of Jesus, glory to God. So God's saying today, stop being content to be a part of the crowd, hallelujah. You can be in the crowd and you can know who I am, but you will not have my power, hallelujah, until you come and you fall at my feet, glory to God. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me, for I perceived that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, glory to God. How many of you know you can't worship God in spirit and in truth and be hid? Hallelujah. If you're worshiping God in spirit and in truth, everybody's looking at you. Not just outside of the church, also in the church. People are looking at you you because they're seeing something happen with you that they don't see happen with many other people. Hallelujah. When you fall at the feet of Jesus and the power hallelujah begins to take over your life. Hallelujah. People see that. Hallelujah. And they're going to want that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. But shall have the light of life. That's also why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Hallelujah. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Glory to God. When you are actually doing the will of God in your life, you cannot hide. Hallelujah. You will not be hid. Glory to God. That's the word of God. She she saw she was not hid. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. She declared to everybody, hallelujah, I've been walking for 12 years bleeding, hallelujah. I've had this heart bleeding for 12 years. My life hasn't been going the way it should have been going. For 12 years, I've been wondering when the Savior was going to show up, hallelujah. For 12 years, I haven't known who God truly was, hallelujah. For 12 years, it's been the 
look like looking like God's incapable of saving my kids. Glory to God. For 12 years, it's been looking like he's the God without power. Hallelujah. For 12 years, for so many years, I've been spending my life laughing at the preacher. For so many years, I've been spending my life laughing at us saints of God. Hallelujah. For so many years, I've been spending my life wondering why I can't see a manifest of power in my life. For so many years, I've been hearing about this power from those people who shine like a light on a hill and I've been laughing them away hallelujah for so many years I've been thinking that the preacher's just picking on me hallelujah for so many years I've been thinking that I'm stuck in this illness for so many years I've been thinking I'm a victim of my mind hallelujah for so many years I've been thinking that I'm trapped here. For so many years, I've tried to figure out ways to get out of the situation I'm in. For so many years, I thought that I was helpless. But now I see a man, hallelujah. Now I see a man that people say is in fact the risen Savior of God, hallelujah. I see a man coming through a crowd, hallelujah. I see a man and I know that he has power, hallelujah. And I know that he's the Son of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to fall at his feet. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare to him that his judgments are righteous. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare to him that his demand, his commandments are righteous. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare to him that he is my God. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit at his feet. Hallelujah. All the days of my life, I will find myself at his feet. I will always be at the feet of Jesus, hallelujah, because I know, hallelujah, that if I am at the feet of Jesus, where I can worship him in spirit and in truth, hallelujah, that I can have the power of God, hallelujah, and I don't have to worry no more, hallelujah, I don't have to keep myself going no more, hallelujah, for Weeping in your night, but joy is coming in the morning. Glory to God. I can see the light come back on. Now the power has gone out. Hallelujah. The power of God, hallelujah, is the ruler of my life. Hallelujah. The gospel of Jesus Christ is what will sustain me. Hallelujah. I will live on the bread of God. Hallelujah. I will not live on the bread of this world. Glory to God. I will walk with God. In all the things that I do, I will not trust in myself. Hallelujah. I will put my trust in God. I will follow after him, even when it looks like he's leading me into a dark place. Glory to God. Even when it looks like he's making me walk through a fire. Glory to God. Even when it looks like he's unleashed the devil on me. Glory to God. I will come to him. I will fall at his feet. And I will live in his power. Hallelujah. I will not hurt no more. More, glory to God. I will not cry no more. Glory to God. I will not fight with my husband no more. Glory to God. I will not fight with my wife no more. Glory to God. And when we do fight, glory to God, we will come to the Lord together. Glory to God. In prayer, hallelujah. Because he said, let them be as one. Hallelujah. And when we got married, we became as one. Glory to God. So when we have a problem, we will go back to him as one. We will fall at his feet as one. Hallelujah. We will worship in spirit and in truth as one. Hallelujah. We will not see darkness in our life for a long time. Hallelujah. If the darkness comes, we will know he's able to deliver. If the darkness shadows itself over our children, we will know that he can deliver. We will know that his blood, hallelujah, can deliver us. We will know that his cross is not powerless, hallelujah. And we will know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. For it is the power of God, hallelujah. Say the power of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God. Is a, we've been looking, saying, God, when will your power rain down from heaven? It's here today. Glory to God. Because we have the gospel of Jesus Christ in this house today. Hallelujah. Whatever it is you need, hallelujah. Step out in faith. Glory to God. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is in the house. Glory to God. The cross of Jesus Christ is preached in this house. Glory to God. For those of you that don't believe, it sounds like foolishness. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. But for those of you who are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. It is the power of God that you've been seeking after. You've been looking for the power of God. And it's here today. Hallelujah. God says it's here today. Hallelujah. If you want my power today, you can have it today. Hallelujah. Because my power went out 2,000 years ago at the cross. Hallelujah. I don't see things the way that you see them. God does not see things the way that we see them. Glory to God. We think when the power goes out, it's getting dark. Hallelujah. But God says when the power goes out, that's when the light comes on. Glory to God. If you don't want the power of God, then you can walk away from God. Hallelujah. You don't have to accept the power of God. You don't have to accept salvation. Hallelujah. You don't have to confess God into your life. Glory to God. But on the day that you sit in front of God, hallelujah, on that great day of judgment, when you sit face to face with God, hallelujah, then you can tell him, tell him, look him in the eyes and say, I don't believe in you. Hallelujah. How are you going to do that? Hallelujah. How are you going to tell God you don't believe in God when you look him face to face? Hallelujah. How are you going to tell God you don't believe in God when he is sitting in your presence? Hallelujah. How are you going to tell God you don't believe in God when he's the light of your life? Hallelujah. How are you going to tell God that he ain't God? Hallelujah. When he's the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. Hallelujah. Darkness does not exist. Hallelujah. Light exists. Darkness is the absence of light. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God says if you feel like you've been sitting in the dark. Hallelujah. Then you need to shine the light. Glory to God. Open your Bible. Hallelujah. And experience the power of God. Today. Glory to God. Stop going on in doubt. Open your Bible and experience his power. Today. Glory to God. Get on your knees before him, hallelujah, and experience his power today, hallelujah. Don't go another moment, glory to God. The next moment is not guaranteed, hallelujah. My son asked me this week, Daddy, how old will I be when you die, hallelujah. And I said, son, I don't know how old I'll be when I die. That's up to the Lord, but I promise you this. Even when I do die, if you will trust in him with all your heart, hallelujah, and lead not to your own understanding, he will direct your paths, hallelujah. He will make your path straight. He will see fit that you make it through this life too. And if you don't do nothing else, and I submit this to all of you today, if you don't do nothing else, nothing else, give your life to Jesus today. In this moment, right now, give your life to God. Give your life, even if you think that you've given it to him. Turn it over more. Hallelujah. Give God some more glory to God. See if you don't go home and fall at his feet. If you don't see the power happen. If you don't see the deliverance you've been needing happen. If you don't see that person that won't come to church no more, come back. Hallelujah. If you won't see God's power, hallelujah. But it starts by telling him today, I know you will. Hallelujah. And I'm willing to search you out. Hallelujah. No matter what it costs, I'm willing to follow after you. Hallelujah. Because you said, if I follow after you, I shall not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. But I shall have the light of life. And I need that light of life. How many of you need the light of life? Hallelujah. We've been living in the darkness of death. And we need the light of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus says, somebody touch me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out from me. Glory to God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to just say this, and I'm, I'm closing. But I got to tell you, Jesus said, I perceive that virtue has gone out from me. I perceive that Glory. Oh, God. Thank you. When you look at the deeper meaning of that word virtue, yes. my God. Yes. He didn't just say, listen, if you do a, a basic search of the word virtue, you get a pretty standard definition of um, moral excellence. 
righteousness and moral excellence. Hallelujah. It's a common phrase today. Virtue signaling is what all our politicians on both sides are doing to people. They're saying, look at me. My ideas are more righteous. My ideas are as moral as they can be, and, and no one else's are. Right? No matter what, what, what their cause is, this is what they're doing. So, so that's virtue for the man. But for God, virtue is strength, power, ability, hallelujah. What are you going to do when the power goes out? Hallelujah. Listen, we're not talking about man's power going out. Yes. We're talking about God's power going out. Inherent power power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. Hallelujah. So we don't just draw the power out of God. Hallelujah. He thrusts it upon us. Hallelujah. When he sees us worshiping at his feet. Power. This is every definition here. Power for performing miracles. Moral power and excellence of soul. The power and influence which belong to riches and wealth. Listen, this sounds like the power that we need to overcome every possible thing that we could bring to God. Hallelujah. We've been bringing these things to God, and we've been handing them to him and running away. Instead of bringing them to him, placing them at his feet, and saying, Lord, I trust you because I know that you are God. Power and resources arising from numbers. Power consisting in or resting upon, this is the one we need the most in the church. Power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. All the power of God is available to us. And all we have to do is acknowledge to him that he truly is God of our lives. If we will go before him and acknowledge to him that he truly is God of our lives, we will see ourselves dug out of these pits. Listen, I'm standing in a pit. Don't always look like I am, but I'm always in a pit. So y'all, y'all who feel like you've been in a pit, you're not alone. We're all in this together. But we need the power of God. We need God to pour out a little bit of virtue. Hallelujah. We need his virtue. We need to get at the feet of Jesus and say, God, your commands are good enough for me. Because what they kept on the border of their garment was a tassel. And that tassel was put there in, uh, Lord, that was a lie. I believe it's Numbers chapter 15. I could be very wrong on that. Y'all pray for me. I'm still learning the Bible too. But it was put there, I know what it says, <clears throat> because there was people who were doubting God. People were forgetting. They were doubting him so much they forgot his commandments. And they were, they were accidentally sinning. And so God said, put this tassel on on the border of your garment, on the hem of your garment, so that you will have a constant reminder that I have given you commandments and I'm expecting you to follow them. And this lady fell very near to where that castle would have been kept. As a sign to God, this is what we do when we get down before God and truly Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Let's do it now. Let's not wait till he forces us. When we get down, we are telling God, I remember your commitments. I remember all the things you said about me in your word. Hallelujah. And I'm here to show you, you are God of my life, and I love you. That's truly what we're doing when we go before the Lord, when we follow his feet. Praise God. If any of you desire prayer today, I desire to pray for you. If any of you desire salvation today, get it today. When we want, when we want the things that we know are of God, we need to get them immediately. We can get everything we want ourselves pretty quick. We're pretty quick if we want a new purse or a new cell phone or 
or a new car. We're real quick to get these things, but when God puts something before us and says, you actually need this right now, sometimes we drag our feet. Don't drag your feet with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's, <clears throat> that's not me commanding you. That's me asking you, please don't drag your feet with God. You will regret that one thing you will live to regret. Hallelujah. If someone desires prayer, then I'll just pray for y'all from right here. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you this day, God, for your word that went forth, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that everyone that heard it, Lord, that they might begin to see that your power truly is going out, hallelujah, across all the world. Over all the world, your power is pouring out, hallelujah. And Lord, move every heart to get down before you and receive your power, God. For the failing heart, hallelujah. For the failing finances, for the failing marriages, for the unsaved children and loved ones, for, for this church, God. Lord, move these hearts to get down before you and receive your power so that we can see your miracles happening all around us this day yes. and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.